Hey there, this is Ken. A customer has been asking me to uh, help him out on a project, and it's always difficult to help one person when others could benefit from the same work. So I thought I would just record a quick video of what he's asking, and this might take up to an hour, but um, fasten your seatbelts. Okay, so what the customer wants to do is he wants to rotate an object, and I'm just going to use this, this cardboard tube as the object. And then he wants to count the number of rotations with a ping sensor using Blockly Prop. And this is a really good project to do um, because it has one input, one output. And regardless of, of what he's rotating and exactly how he's counting it using the ping or laser ping, it's a good one to demonstrate. So I'm going to um, quickly put this project together and uh, build the code and it'll all be recorded right here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I have a, a little work area here where I can um, mount up uh, a place to keep things tidy. So first off, I'm just going to put this board on some standoffs really quick. And this, I'm using this foam core board. I like it because I can just press the board into it and it'll, it'll at least stay put without sliding all over the place. So I'm just going to put these hex standoffs on the board really quick. You may not have all the parts that I do. I've tried to keep this intentionally very basic so it could be mimicked by anybody with their different hardware. I mean, you could use a popsicle stick instead of using um, this cardboard too. That's totally up to you. Okay, so I've got the standoffs on the board. Then I'm just gonna press it into this foam core board and it'll really stay put. And I'm using the Propeller Activity Board WX, by the way. All right, so um, I mentioned that the objective was to rotate an object, which would be this. And I'd like to mount that on a servo and have it up high enough so that the ping has a minimum distance to see the object. The ping minimum detection distance, I think, is about half of an inch. So to do that, I'm just going to elevate this servo up um, using some, some blocks of wood and a hot glue gun. I love hot glue guns for this kind of stuff. They're super fast. Um, they're not always good for you know, production quality looking efforts, but in this case, you know, who cares? We're just doing a little proof of concept. Okay, the two blocks are mounted. And I'm going to do something that may not be as easy for all of you to do, which is I'm just going to mount a servo here. Depends on how much you know, hardware you have laying around, whether or not you want to use a servo in this way. But I happen to have a lot of servos at Parallax, of course, and don't mean to be wasteful with them, but I, I will be able to remove this one later. And I'm going to plug the servo into um, pin 17. So couple things here that are important. First off, I'm going to start out with that jumper on the board on 5 volts, which is VDD. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can get a better, better look at what I'm seeing. Okay, just position the camera the right way. Okay. All right, so the white lead of the servo is going to go closest to the silkscreen label on the board where it says P17, All right? And you um, can even give a closer look at that if you would like. Okay, so there you have it, We're plugged into P17. I'm gonna zoom out. And I'm gonna make the system work in pieces before I do the whole thing. A subsystem test, if you will. Okay, the servo's mounted. I have a <clears throat> power supply here. I'm just using these batteries. So um, I have alkaline batteries, so you have a total of seven and a half volts here <clears throat> in the system, okay? So I plug in the power. And if I had this jumper on VN, the seven and a half volts would go directly to the servo motor, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to give it 5 volts. I think that's a little bit above its rating. So I'm going to put this horn on it and we are going to turn the board on to position 2. 
Right. So next up here, I'm going to switch over to BlockleyProp and just write a little program that makes the servo turn and a program we can use to make sure it is centered. Okay. So I've started up a Blockly Prop Launcher, and if I click on that Blockly Prop Solo button, it'll open up a window. This is a self-contained Chrome application. And I'm just going to make a new project, and I'm going to call it Turn and Count Rotations. And the board I'm using is the Propeller Activity Board. And I, I will post this code for everybody when I'm done, by the way make this a little bit easier for you to see by clicking on the plus sign. It's a little bit of latency here because of the um, recording software I'm using. Okay, so uh, I'm going to add a comment to the beginning of this. Wow, I didn't mean for it to be that big. And I'm just going to call this program rotate thing and count. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to center the servo. So I'm going to go get a servo block. I'm using the continuous rotation servo. And as I mentioned, I have it on pin <clears throat> 17. And I'm going to initially give it a speed of 0. And then we're going to go and center the servo. So when I give it a value of 0, it stays put. So I'm going to download that code. Here we go. And let's get a look at what the servo is doing now. Okay, it's not doing anything, which means it is actually already centered. So if I turn it just a little bit, there's a potentiometer on the side of the servo case. And what you want to do is turn that potentiometer with the screwdriver very gently until the servo stops. Okay, so this servo is now centered. So let's take this servo horn, and I am simply going to hot glue it. I love hot glue um, for getting things done quickly to this cardboard tube. So I'll just load this up with some glue at the moment. Put a little bit here. I already marked the middle of this tube, by the way. And then let's just plop that servo horn right on there. Okay. Hot glue. So nice because it dries so quickly. I mean, it doesn't look good, but we don't really care. We just want a stable working proof of concept. Okay, so once we're sure that that is dried out, um, we can go ahead and put it on the servo. Okay, so it's mounted, and we want to make sure that there's nothing in the way of this from turning, so I've made sure the cable is low. So let's go see what happens if we provide a speed now to the Blockly Prop program. Which is right here. Okay, so let's just make it really slow. Let's make it 5, and then we'll download. And then switching over to our camera again. Okay, you can see that is now turning very slowly. And the ranges here are between minus 100 and plus 100. And the thing to keep in mind here is really what's happening is once you set a servo speed, the propeller will maintain it for you. And you're really giving a signal here that is 1.5 milliseconds every 20 to 40 milliseconds to center the servo. So now we'll try giving it a little bit of a faster speed. Let's try like, oh, 25 and then we'll, we'll set this up so that we can change the speeds and you can actually look at the video because that'll be more interesting. Okay, so I'll position this window right next to the visualizer software. 
and hopefully it'll just shrink things down so you can still see what's going on. Okay, and I think I'll try to make that a little bit larger for you. Decrease the uh, Blockly prop code a tad. All right, so that's 25, and you can see it's turning um, counterclockwise, so it must be that minus 25 will go the other direction. All right, and then full speed should be 100, because our glue is now dry, so let's let her rip. Okay, really cooking now. And that's going to be faster than the customer will want to rotate whatever thing he is uh, using. So I'm just going to turn this down now to zero so it's not a problem for me. And then I'm going to hook up the ping sensor and make sure we can get it to work properly. Then we'll integrate the two. So we're making the pieces work individually and then the whole system together. Okay, so I'll maximize the view of the uh, setup here. Oh, and I should really power down the board here so the servo's not getting the signal. Okay, the ping sensor. So where to place it um, is probably relevant, but we're just going to plop it right here in the middle for now. And uh, I think what I'll do is like throw a really short standoff or two on there. <clears throat> yeah, maybe it's okay. I'll just leave it in place. Okay, so for this ping sensor, um, I am going to wire into... How about we use IO pin 12 for that? And I, I would really prefer to use the laser pin in this case uh, because it can do a thousand readings a second, but this is okay. It'll, it'll work fine. All right, so now um, we have the pin wired into P12 and that jumper is also set at VDD. So let's go ahead and test the ping out. First we'll just uh, make sure this servo is turned off. The reason it didn't maintain my last program is because I downloaded it to RAM and uh, after the power is cycled, that program's lost. So use the third button here in Blockly Prop, which is EEPROM. Okay, and as now you can see, um, it's not moving. So let's get the ping sensor to work first second actually and uh, to do that we're just going to make a program loop because we're going to want to take a bunch of measurements forever so we'll get a repeat block and let's go find the ping block it should be under sensor distance ping all right, and we're just going to attach that to a variable. Item is the default name. And um, you can also just click on variables and then you can, I believe you can rename. It's been a while since I've, I've done this. Well, we'll just, we'll just say distance inches and make a new one. And then retrieve that variable. And let's let's maximize the display here. This will be a lot easier to work with. Throw item in the garbage can. And sorry, the video is hopping around a little bit. That's just because I have this recording software going. So I know it's a little bit annoying. Okay, so we'll get the distance. And why don't we just start out by graphing it? So we have to add an initialized block to graph. And then we can get this block. We're going to have to slow this down too because we cannot uh, take you know, a thousand measurements a second with the ping. And I'm going to switch this block to inline inputs, which is a little bit easier way. And the label is just a uh, text label that goes on the graph. It's not the variable, variable name, but you can make it that. So I'm just going to call it distance inches. In fact, we should really just work in centimeters here. So let's fix that right away. And I'll change this to centimeters. And I'm going to make a new variable called distance cm.
bring it out. Sometimes just navigating uh, the Blockly tool is a little bit difficult. You have to learn how to do this. Um, so you could separate some blocks from others. All right, and then inside that value, we just want to plop in there distance CM, distance of centimeters, and then let's put a pause in this for, and we'll say, what? How about 100 milliseconds? Okay, and then we will share the screen again. Let's download. Oh, by the way, what pin am I on? Yes, pin 12, I think I said. Checking that again. Yep, looks good. Okay, downloading the code. And then we should see a graph here. Okay, so it's hard to see the value of that graph, but um, it's auto scaling and it says 180. Okay, so and then occasionally it will provide a very low value of 115 because it's seeing um, a box I have on the shelf. So uh, what we'll do is just put this right over it. And the distance to that must be, well, let's get the exact value by switching away from the graph and then going to a terminal. Since this is just a, uh, it's really close or it's not there kind of example, we only care about whether or not it's there. So we're going to replace this graph block with a terminal block under communicate and then terminal. You can find this terminal print text and number. I'm gonna use both of these together. I like this way. And then under text, we can just uh, put a text label in there. And this is distance centimeters equals and then we'll put the variable right below it and let's just make a new line each time so we'll do about 10 readings a second we don't even have to do that many we can just do um, four a second so downloading that code might be difficult for you to see the terminal here Okay, so you can see that with the tube over the sensor, it is seven centimeters away. And then as you move it, whatever it sees next, either the box on the shelf or the ceiling uh, varies between 115 and 116 centimeters away. All right, so quite easy here. Um, seven centimeters is when the object is nearest. All right, so why don't we then try to count it now? Um, count the rotations. So to do that, I'm going to make a variable called counter. Just going to drag it out here for now. And I'm going to give counter an initial value of zero. Okay, and then um, what I'd like to do is every time I get a measurement that is less than 10 centimeters, I want to increment counter. So we'll use a if then loop. So we'll go into control here and we'll use actually, yeah, if do, keep it really simple. And we're just going to put everything into that loop. Make sure you can see this now. How's that? Okay, so if counter is less than 10, then we're going to increment the counter and display it. So we need a, a mathematical block here. Let's go find one of those. And um, sort of uh, greater than or less than is what I'm looking for. We'll use that one. And um, I think the first thing we should do is actually take the measurement. So we'll, we'll take this block outside of the loop because we want to be counting even if we're not incrementing the counter. 
Okay, so in here we need the variable counter. And this video is totally un unedited. So let's see here. Ah, change of plans here. As I think about this a little bit more. No, 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 this is good. We want to check distance. That's the variable we're checking in CM. So if distance in CM is less than a value of 10, go get a number, drop it in here. Then counter equals counter plus one. So there are a couple ways to do this. You could just say increment counter. So we get that decrement block and we'll set it to increment. Then we'll attach counter to it. You could also say counter equals counter plus one if you prefer. That might be a little bit easier to read. Okay, so now we want to, um, instead of counting distance, we're going to say counter equals. And then we will show the value of counter. Um, and I think, too, what we, we could do here to just clean up the display from um, keeping it from getting too messy is we could just do a clear display. So coming back into terminal, clear screen. Okay, we'll put that at the end. Now, this pause has to be less than the time it takes by some amount for the thing to rotate over the sensor so we don't miss any counts. So let's just make it like 100, okay? We'll start there. Oh, and we, by the way, we forgot our servo speed block. We need to put that in here. We want to turn things. So the thing. And we could do a lot of fun tests here where we find out at what point we're unable to count with the values we're using, with the speed that we decide to use, and with the delay we have in between um, printing to terminal, clearing the screen, and then checking the distance again. So we'll start out just going kind of slow here, and let's see if that works. We'll try 25. All right, wonder if my program's going to work. I'll give it a quick look again. I think it looks pretty good. So let's give it a try. Let's download and see if things start turning and everything happens. Oh, whoops, that's not good. Communication failed. How come? Try that again. All right, so. And nothing is happening, and why is that? Okay, the servo is just not turning. So, ah, I think I know why. The servo was on pin 17. There's always something here. Okay, and then we'll download again. Okay, so the thing is rotating now. And presumably what's happening is the terminal is not updating fast enough. It says 25, 30, oh, okay. So the problem is you might guess is that we're getting many counts on each pass of the thing. So what we need to do is put a We'll increase this to um, probably, let's say like, uh, I think 500. And we can also put a pause in the main loop because we don't want to be, if the thing is not within 10 centimeters, there's no reason to take so many measurements so quickly. So I'm just going to increase that by set of 500 for the main loop. Let's just use like 100 and slow this thing down. Okay, and let's run it again. All 
All right, so what are we seeing now? Counter four, counter five, counter six, counter, s oh, didn't see the seventh one display. Terminal's not working perfectly here. So why don't we just see if we could take out this clear screen, clear screen block and get a little better results. There you go. Okay, so um, we could speed this up and just see what the limits of it are based on our current delays here and make sure we're not double counting things. So let's speed it up to full speed. And then download again and see how counter does. Intermittent internet connection here where I am, working over wireless. Hopefully it works a little better for you. Okay, that servo didn't speed up. Why is that? Ah, it says 25. I must have changed something. Oh, I know what I changed. I changed the code that checks the distance. That's better. Downloading again. Okay, now we're full speed here. Count, 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 count. So we're probably missing some things here. So what I would need to do, I think we're missing every other one. So let's decrease this from 500 to say like 200. And we'll increase the, decrease the uh, delay between checking the ping down to 50 or so. And this pause right here, this 200, should be the amount of time it takes for the object to pass over the ping. So through experimentation, you can find the right values. But the main point was to show the customer how this could work. So what you should be seeing is number, 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 number. Okay, looks like we got this working quite nicely. And one other thing you could do here, instead of using this um, terminal block with uh, numbers scrolling down a screen, it might be fun now to throw in terminal graphing. So let's do that like we did in the very beginning. And then we can see the value changing on the screen. So we're just going to right click on this, disable it, come back to graph and uh, drop in a graph block. And then let's put um, counter attached to that. And we'll run it. And it would be fun too to um, change the speed here. There's a lot of experimentation we can do, but don't really have a lot of time to do it. So yeah, all you're seeing is a very linear, it's auto scaling. So the Y axis is showing the number that it's actually counting at 15, 16, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, in increments of two. So not terribly interesting, really. Um, it might be fun to change the speed over time and then look at that graph. So we could do that too. Uh, what we could do to make this fun is take that block out and we could put this whole thing in a repeat loop that goes from one value to another on servo speed and then uh, changes it periodically. So let's do that. Okay, so I think the best way to do this would be a repeat loop, repeat item. And I haven't played around with Blockly for a little bit, so this might just take me a tad of time to get right. So if you're bored, this would be the time to check out. If you're not, stay on board. 
just going to delete that block now since we're using graphing only. Okay, so what I'd like to do is repeat item from minus 100, that's the range of servo speed, to plus 100 by 1. So we're going to see a whole sweeping range of servo speeds here. And then once it gets through with this loop, it's obviously going to go from the full speed one direction to the full speed in the other direction, which is going to look kind of messy. And we will change then in this loop, the speed will now be the variable item. Okay, what do you think? I think that's going to work? I think it's going to work. Let's see what happens. And so the only thing I don't like about this is that I don't want the speed to change so quickly. We really can't see a whole lot. So I'm just going to say, let's put a little more of a pause in there to slow down the step so that every, let's say, 10 times a second plus the time it takes for the ping to get a measurement, we will go um, from minus 100 to minus 90 or so. Timing is everything here. I don't know if I said that all right, but let's download this code. Okay. So it'll really be nice here is if the um, Spacing on the x-axis does not change, which it looks like you're seeing. Now look, interesting problem. So I parked the tube over the top of the ping, so I got measurements there that are not terribly accurate. And of course, this value will just continue to ramp up. Okay, there, it just reversed the other way again. So it's slowing down. So you can see little change in the, the ramp there, as it slows down. Okay, now it's going to go back the other way. Pretty cool. Okay, and so that's the extent of this video. I hope this helped out uh, the customer needs help and others as well.